Hello and welcome to Pharmacology 101 Lecture 2, Understanding How Drugs Work. In this lecture we'll talk more about bioavailability and the first pass effects. So let's look at what is bioavailability. So bioavailability actually refers to a concept that quantifies the percentage of the administered dose that actually reaches the systemic circulation. So this is an important point to understand. So when you administer the drugs parentally um, or IV, we assume that 100% of the dose that you administer will reach the systemic circulation that we just talked about. With oral drugs or drugs administered uh, transdermally or through other routes of administration, the picture is a little bit different. So how do you actually um, figure out what is the amount of drug that's going to be absorbed into the body. You do it by knowing the dose of the drug and also what is the bioavailability of the drug. And this will tell you the extent of the absorption. It won't tell you the rate, but it'll tell you the extent of how much the drug is going to be absorbed. So for example, let's say you have a drug that's called digoxin. A lot of you may be familiar with it if you have older relatives. It's commonly taken for congestive heart failure. So we know that the bioavailability of digoxin tablets has a value of 0 0.7. So this is just an established value. You don't need to calculate it. You would just get it from a resource. So let's say you have a dose of 125 micrograms, one pill or 0.1 to 5 milligrams because there's a thousand micrograms in one milligram. So now based on that information you can actually calculate the amount that's going to be absorbed into the body when you take one pill. So let me illustrate to you the concept of bioavailability a little bit differently. So if you still don't understand it, let's look together at the study that looked at relative bioavailability of ketoprofen and a PLO gel. So Ketoprofen is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug and it's commonly used for pain relief or inflammation in a variety of different clinical disorders, for example osteoarthritis. So this specific study looked at the bioavailability of ketoprofen when it was given to eight healthy volunteers and it was administered to these volunteers in two different forms. So form number one was that they were given a single dose of 50 milligrams oral dose, such as a tablet, for example. And then they were given 200 milligrams of ketoprofen that was administered topically. So you can see that the oral dose, 50 milligrams, was much lesser, so it was four times lesser than the dose that was given topically. Despite such a drastic discrepancy, and the dose, what they actually found is that the medium oral maximum plasma concentration or the Cmax, uh, when it was given orally, when it was given orally, exceeded the topical Cmax by nearly 200 fold. So even though the oral dose was four times smaller, four times lesser than the topical dose, the Cmax that it produced exceeded the topical Cmax by nearly 200 fold. So when the drug was applied topically, so little of it got into the systemic circulation. Uh, so that will explain to you that based on the route of administration, different, even the same drug can have a completely different bioavailability. And the amount that gets into your body is very different. Uh, different dosage forms can have different bioavailability as well. For example, let's say somebody had a congestive heart failure and now you need to give them the joxin. Well, they also have difficulty swallowing. Maybe it's an elderly patient. So what you would do is you would give them the joxin in a form of the elixir versus give them a giant pill to swallow. And the joxin elixir has actually a different bioavailability uh, versus compared to the bioavailability of the tablets, it's a little bit better. It's 0.8 versus 0.7. So based on that information, you can actually calculate the equivalent dose of digoxin that they would have to take or the amount that would be absorbed if it was taken via the form of the elixir. So let's uh, just 
finish bioavailability and let's look at it from one more angle. So imagine that you have a patient who is going into the surgery and in order to induce the anesthesia they're going to be given an anesthetic drug that's called ketamine. Ketamine is also used for pain management. So the dose that's given for the induction of anesthesia is going to be 50 milligrams given IV bolus. Let's say you have another patient who have chronic who has a chronic regional pain syndrome or CRPS and this patient is prescribed a ketamine cream. The dose that they are prescribed by a physician of the cream is one gram that's applied, one to two grams that's applied twice a day. So 1,000 milligrams of the cream is not a dose of the drug. The proper dose of the drug is actually knowing the milligrams of the drug. So let's say the cream that they were prescribed was 20% ketamine based. That means that with each dose of the cream, the dose of the drug is going to be 200 milligrams. So if they're administering 1 to 2 grams applied BID or twice a day of the cream, uh, the maximum upper limit that they're administering would be 800 milligrams a day topically. So imagine if this dose, look at this dose, and then look at this dose. So when this is given IV, it's enough to knock somebody out versus when this is given topically, how many more times that is, um, it's going to be used for pain management. So clearly what that illustrates to you is that not all of the ketamine gets into your system. So ketamine in a topical form has a different bioavailability, otherwise the person would be knocked out and under anesthesia if all of it went in. So now finally we're going to look at the first pass effect and basically what first pass effect is going to refer to, it's going to refer to pre-systemic drug metabolism by the liver as a drug is going to pass through the liver via centripetal portal vein. So what does that mean? Our liver is an amazing organ and it's amazing in a sense that it receives blood supply from two different sources. So there is a portal vein, this one's going to bring the blood from the bowel or your gastrointestinal system and there's a hepatic artery and this one's going to bring blood from the heart. So basically what happens is let's say you take nutrients and let's say you take let's say you eat a donut so the donut is going to go into your digestive system it's going to be digested all those little sugar uh, glucose molecules are going to be in there and then they're going to go to the liver where uh, glycogen is going to be built so that uh, glucose can be stored. Well, the same process happens to drugs. So the drugs you take orally are going to get into your GI system and as they go through the GI system then they're going to go to the liver via a portal vein. And as they go to the liver they're going to undergo two processes. Number one they're going to be metabolized or number two they're going to be excreted via biliary excretion. So what that means is that the portion that's reaching systemic circulation is going to be so much less than if you took the drug IV. Because if you inject the drug IV, it gets into your systemic circulation directly. And this is a concept behind giving a much lesser dose of the drug um, in an injectable form versus giving a much greater dose in an oral form. Because what's happening? So in order for the drug in order for the drug to get into your systemic circulation, in order for the drug to get into your systemic circulation, in order for it to go to your tissues and be distributed to your tissues, it has to get into the systemic circulation. Well, before it can even get to the systemic circulation, it goes from the gut through the portal vein to the liver where it's metabolized and excreted. And some drugs actually have a very significant first pass effect. For example, propranolol, you have to take much greater dose of it orally than when you take IV. So this concludes the end of lecture two for Pharmacology 101. Thank you so much for your time and let's move forward together to the next lecture.